All right, so we're live on Above the Set podcast, and uh, we're missing Chris. He's out doing some trick or treating without his kid. No, um, but yeah. So we'll pick up without him. We're going to talk about Wolves that is streaming on uh, what was it? Apple TV. Apple. Yeah. yeah. Apple did you TV. already already have Apple TV, or did you all have to? Well, I used okay. to. And then I actually did have to pick it back up for this, oh, okay. but I I enjoy it. There's a couple of things that I need to catch up on. Like my my in laws have been telling me to watch Ted Lasso forever, and I know Trey's told me to watch oh, it as well. But I you haven't only watched, watched a couple episodes of it. We haven't really got in. It's because one of those, it's one of those things where like I'm that's a show that I want to watch with Haley. So with oh, how busy like- we are. It's like hard to in all the other shows that we do watch already. It's hard to fit in another show. But yeah. I um I actually started um on Netflix. There's an Australian version of Yellowstone, and it's hmm. called um. My, I can't even think of it. I'm gonna look it up, but it's pretty much an Australian version of uh, Yellowstone. So you got Australians. And instead of Indian people, you have Australian indigenous people. The Aborigines. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's not bad. It's it's a little bit of a forced drama as far as like, you know, Yellowstone was really good at being naturally realistic on what was happening. And then uh, this one is like just drama, you know, like let's mm-hmm. write situations. This, this. Yeah, that, that's a little bit too much. Yeah, Apple TV it, has some. Apple TV does have some good stuff, though. I mean, if you're just getting back into it, um, watch um, Sunny. Is we're watching mm-hmm. that right now. It's very good with Rashida Jones, and then um, I think it was called Nightingale with um, uh, God, not Edgerton. What's his name? Uh, Aaron Eckert, or no, not Aaron Eckert. Um, anyway, I can't think of the guy's name, but um. It's good. It's about a guy who kind of he goes into prison to like kind of get a confession from a serial killer to try to find like the bodies, and it's based around like a true story. Um, very good, like from a performance standpoint. Um, but they've they've got some good stuff there on Apple. Their casting yeah. is excellent. Yeah. Now Apple has some some hit and misses, but mo- there's some there's definitely some good stuff. There's no bad. There's really no bad. It's just if it's. Uh, what you're into watching, you're, you'll find something for you for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you? But did the have, one on have you guys Netflix have, is called Territory. Sorry, Territory. Yeah. yeah. So, have you guys watched uh, Foundation? I think is like the. It's like a really big. I, I think it was my, Apple. My buddy son yeah. talks about that all the time. Gotcha. Yeah, that's like um, that's like their Game of Thrones like competitor kind of kind of deal. Um, I've heard some mixed stuff about it though. Check that. Well, we'll make Apple TV worth it. And uh, for anyone else that's maybe following us on the podcast and they did the same thing, we'll make it worth it. But um, we'll talk about Wolves, and Wolves is starring um, George Clooney, which is from uh, Corey's Neck of the Woods and my Whatever. Neck of the Woods. Look at your shirt. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, and then we got Brad Pitt. So we'll get into yeah, that. and one. and a newcomer. Ish. I mean, he's been around, but Austin Abrams plays the kid. Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't really look into him to know what his yeah what he was like. I forget what he's been in. I've seen him, but I don't know what I've seen him in. He's been in a few things uh, so far. He's he's actually he's kind of like he's one of those guys who is um, quote done it right. Um, you know where he's been around for a little while. I think his like first big one was um, uh, The Walking Dead. Uh, he was in, yeah, he was in the, uh, the walking dead. Um, and then, uh, he's shown up in a few, like he's done a lot of television as well. Um, like, you know, episodes here and there, like regular, um, but he was in euphoria a little bit. Obviously that's, you know, pretty heavy type of, uh, you know, more dramatic type of stuff. He's in, uh, this is us. If you guys have ever seen any of that, uh, oh. which I haven't. <laughs> um, but this is kind of like, I mean, you know, he's had a good career. Like even at this point, like if you just looked at it, like where he's been, like what, what he's on track for, that's a good career. But now he's stepping into, you know, start co-starring with 
Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Oh yeah, you know, that's, that's... two of the biggest movie stars in the entire world still. No, I um, and we'll talk about each character, but I, I, uh, yeah. and we can start with him. I, uh, I enjoyed his performance as far okay. as it wasn't what you expect. You did you like as you watch this film and you get introduced to his character, which how this film starts off is there's a high level politician that is uh, uh, checking her MILF status pretty much. She's going to hook up with a college college dude, and uh, which happens to be Austin Abrams. And uh, he actually has like a, tr- there's a tragic event where you find him lifeless to say the least on the floor. And that's where uh, the characters come in. But what I was going to say with him is you didn't expect, I didn't expect his character to turn into a co co-starring character. Yeah, you kind of just thought that he was just going to be like just like a little quick little role and then yeah. disappear for mm-hmm. the film. You didn't think he was going to stick around the entire film. Yeah, it wasn't in a trailer or anything. Yeah, I mean he, he definitely had enough moments in the trailer where I kind of expected him to be around but I thought he was going to be more of like like not as integral to their characters and to their plot. I thought it was going to be more of like um, they were chasing him the entire time, like trying to track him down, that type of thing, where he's kind of like either a red herring or a MacGuffin. And I guess he kind of is, but he becomes really integral to their characters and to the plot. Yeah. And that I didn't expect. So, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some scenes. So how did, how did you all feel about the opening scene of the film and how all that was introduced? Liked it. Um, you know, I think that the, the trailer definitely gives away like kind of like a lot of the highlights and it's very, um, you know, there's, there's some good world building in it, uh, overall, which I, I appreciate that they use that. They also kind of set up the dynamic of Brad Pitt and George Clooney and this client, um, you know, which was important, but it was also a little bit like it kind of lacked, like, I almost felt like that scene was rife to kind of have like that, like snappiness from like Ocean, Ocean's Eleven, uh, in the Oceans franchise. And I kind of felt like it was, it almost felt like them. Like it was kind of like old and slow and kind of like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, I was like, and I was like, where's the, like, where's the pop? Like I was kind of waiting for like that pop to happen, but it, you know, a uh, theme throughout the movie, it looks great. What about you, Corey? How'd you feel um, about the, opening? I actually didn't watch the trailer. I just kind of jumped into the water dripping off my mustache. Eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually didn't watch the trailer. I just watched the film. So, you know, I didn't know where it was really going from the jump I knew that Brad Pitt and George Clooney were in it but it was interesting letting it build up from a perspective of not knowing anything that was getting ready to happen uh but I I think that just one of my favorite parts it was I guess it was more towards the beginning it kind of was not really the opening scene but whenever they and it goes throughout the film as well whenever George Clooney and Brad Pitt are doing the double talk, I guess is what you call it, where they're both talking at the same time. They're talking over each other and you're trying mm-hmm. to differentiate mm-hmm. who's saying what and what's more important to hear for the scene. Yeah. But I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a good opening scene. I mean, um, <clears throat> I, I remember taking it because, like, you know, I saw the drone shots and they kind of like, you didn't see anything happening. You had to kind of just hear it and think about what was happening. Um, yeah. But I thought it was a good uh, opening scene to introduce uh, the characters and then um, how Brad Pitt showed up and everything. So, which Brad Pitt and George Clooney, for anyone that doesn't know, they are pretty much fixers, right? Is that cleaners, safe? Yeah. yeah, cleaners. Yeah, I think cleaners yeah. is almost the better. Yeah, fixers, cleaners. Yeah, that kind of... Yeah, so they they show up so to get rid of this body up. of the uh, college dude, um, and they pretty much have like a beef on who is taking this job because they don't work in a pack, to say the least. Yeah, yeah, they're they always working they're alone, alone because they're so good at what they do that they don't need help. Yeah. They pretty exactly. much can right. go get nobody in, get out, get it done. No problem. Nobody can do what I do. That's yeah. that's the the consistent theme from both of them, and that's how it's presented to the world. One thing about the opening, though, I don't know. It was like with that initial opening where it's like you have her and she's like trying to get her purse, and 
you know, cell phone out from under the kid and there's like blood on it. And oh, yeah, yeah. she's like, she's kind of giving like this performance of like, this is like really serious. It's like kind of gritty and grounded where she's like hyperventilating and like calling. And, and again, it was kind of strange to me because it was almost like you have that where it's like the, you have this opening. It's just a lot of visual storytelling, which I love. And then Clooney shows up and then Pitt shows up and everybody's just fine. You know, it was like, everybody's just like, she's, she's fine. Like she's a little nervous still, but there's a knock on the door and she's just kind of like, yeah, I oh, guess I would say hello. compliments to the directing because you know, yeah. that's, if you can make it feel like, okay, now that the people that see this every day, part of their job, make it feel calm. That's how it should turn out. Right. I guess, I, I guess what I was driving at is that like, like for them, like, yeah, they should be the calm, like for sure, because they see that every single day, this is what they do. But it's like the, the, the filmmaking actually, I felt like kind of lost that, like, it, you know, it, like for lack of better terms, like for, like from like a visual storytelling standpoint, it almost felt like when someone's freaking out, you know, uh, there's like, you know, like when she was first on the ground trying to make that phone call and the camera's kind of like pushing in towards her. Um, you know, it, like there's this tightness when you're freaking out, there's like this, like trapped, like this, like smaller frame. And, you know, when Clooney and Pitt were there, like everything was very grand, like the, the apartment was very big. It, it you know, and, and I think that's fine. Like, you know, if you wanted to kind of open it up with them, with the two of them, where this is just the world that they live in, they take it in, they enjoy it. There's a bigger world around them. But I just kind of felt like for her, like there still wasn't like this claustrophobia, like when there's the knock on the door, like, you know, I almost missed like that tight shot, like up into up into her frame so that she can kind of be like, you know, still tight, like kind of like, oh, my God, like someone's going to find this dead kid here. You know what I mean? And it's like, because even if you have your pro there, you have a pro that you don't know. He's telling you what to do. You're keeping it together. And then someone knocks at the door. That should be like dead quiet record skip like you're like oh my god but instead it was just kind of like hey just just tell him you know it's not it's not terrible it was just a little bit of like an observation of mine i, I kind of just wanted a little bit more out of that moment to kind of set me up just for kind of like the caper that kind of follows after that yeah i guess oh. for, for her not freaking out though i feel like maybe it was because she knew she was already getting taken care of you know what i'm saying like she yeah. now turned it over to Clooney's character and she's kind of wiped their hands of it. So whatever happens now, it's like, hey, I'm looking at you. You have to take care of this issue. Yeah, because yeah. one thing we got to remember is I don't think we ever found out who gave her his number and said to call him right. if you need anything. Yeah. We still don't know. They mention it at the end, but they, he's not like a named guy. He's right. he's literally their guy. Yeah. Like he's yeah, like their contact. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and they set it up almost, I mean, not to get too far ahead of us, but they set that up as like, almost like a John Wick-esque, like maybe yep. there could be a sequel. I don't think that they'll Wolf. do one, but they set it like that. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah wolves. Once, and it, once we get wolves, to I think it becomes wolves at that point. Once we get to that, I have a, I have a take about that. Yeah. yeah okay. We'll okay. That. Yeah. So, um, all right. So we, they're beefing it and we're having some pretty, I, I enjoyed the dialogue between those two with the little yeah, banter yeah. of like, Oh, I wouldn't do it that way. Um, you know, Brad Pitt being like the, uh, annoying younger brother mm -hmm. and that the older brother's mm -hmm. cleaning up, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. I thought yeah. that was funny. Yeah. yeah. He's kind of like directing the show, but kicking back and he's doing yeah. his Brad Pitt thing where. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and he's he's having his snack. He's doing, you know, every single time Brad Pitt has to kind of hang out and have his snack, you know, every single time. <laughs> no, I, I really enjoyed it. The one part that I really liked was when they were actually like cleaning up the body. And when mm. just the just the skills that each of them showcased, especially George yeah. Clooney's character, when when he like Rode him. lays down and he put that tape the opposite way on the ground and he just kicked yeah. it and then rolled it right up in the rug like that. Yeah. And then like when he hung him, hung him in the <laughs> cart and he's, he's like, like hey, leaned man, on it. Hey man, that looks like a, that looks like a dead body. And he's like, yeah, he's like, that looks like just, just a dead body rose, hanging on the cart. It was like the thing over top of it. I was like, this is, 
Yeah. This is the yeah. He zipped him up in like a suit, like a like yeah, a wardrobe like, bag. Yeah, maybe it looked like it was clothes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that I, was... I thought it was really cool. It was really well thought mm-hmm. scenes. You know, like okay, let's make if someone's watching this, like, but oh, but what if? What if? What yeah. if? What if? So they kind of filled those gaps. I, I I like that, and and one thing I did like about it, especially once she was kind of out of the picture, and you know, those two were in the room together. I mean, obviously, like you have the Clooney Pitt chemistry off the bat. We know it. We love it. That's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was like this feeling, this like old school, late '90s, early 2000s, like film noir, like this is going to be a long night type of movie. Yeah, and. I really, I love that. Personally, I, I love like, you know, where you can really string characters A to B. And I love when there's like this feeling of sweat and um, tired and worn out and the wounds kind of keep catching up to people over time. And I was really kind of almost anticipating that initially, like when they were kind of like in that room kind of stuck and he's not taking his time. But they took a long time. Like that was, they were in there like doing stuff and he wasn't exactly like rushing. Um, They kind of moved through it like as if they were actually, they had real business in there and they were actually getting that job done. And I kind of, I liked that. And I almost kind of, at a certain point, I missed that. Uh, But there were still some elements that I felt about that, that we'll, you know, when we get to those, you know, kind of point out too. By the way, did you guys, uh, sorry, did you guys catch that? And maybe I'm crazy. They did a good job when, you know, because it's like, obviously we know that this thing hinges on the kid is alive. I mean, we, we know that from the trailers, if you've seen them, I don't think right. that's too big of a, a spoiler. When he first leans down to check his pulse, there's almost like a little bit, maybe I was making it up in my head, but there was a little bit of a sound sting where there was just like the slightest, the little bit of like a, like just a slight, and he gets the knock right at the same time. Yeah. And I don't know if it was just my speakers or what, but it no. uh, it was almost like I was like he's just about to focus in and catch that the kid's alive, and then things I, just keep interrupting him. I caught that too, and the way I took yeah. it was he wasn't able to concentrate to really say, "Oh, that was a post," because the knock happened at the same time. Yeah, yeah I caught that yeah. exactly. No, that was that was a cool little uh, rip piece little. there too. I like that. Yeah, good, good little the, catch, uh, I think. And as we kind of go on through the story, I thought the chase scene and everything was dope. Because, uh, you know, just looking at how they, I knew they were moving a camera to, to track the car, mm-hmm. rap hit running, all that stuff. Um, and then, so to touch on my standpoints with the cinematographer, talk, talk free stuff. The even from the opening scene, I like how everything was like low light. They used yeah. practicals, like yep. nothing was overly lit. It I was like it. light was being motivated from lamps or little lights above and stuff. And then they carried that onto the street, and it was like the street was the same way. Everything was low lit. The light was coming from mm-hmm. the street lights, the things they were driving past. Um, I thought it looked amazing. I, I thought it was probably one of the best looking movies I've seen on Apple TV. So. I am. I, I have to agree with you. I'm very, very, very impressed. I doubt they shot this on film, but it had a film like quality and a big piece of it was the lighting. And this, you know, initially this movie was supposed to come out in theaters. Like this trailer was playing in theaters and then they push it just to Apple or what have you. And just to Apple, you know. Um, as if, you know, small beans, but, um, I almost wish that I'd seen it in theaters because this movie is freaking stunning. Like what you're talking about, like the contrast, the depth, like you put it better than I could with, with like the practical lighting where it felt like you were there in every single scene and it gave it such a cinematic depth that was beautiful. And so many films are oversaturated. Like, I mean, you know, for anybody watching right now, like if you look at the difference between R3 lighting right now, you have um, like if you, if you look at like my lighting, my lighting is like oversaturated. It's way too bright. It's obviously lit. It's like amateurish. It's lit, but it's amateurish. If you look at Corey's lighting, it's almost more of like a sitcom or like a single camera, like modern family where it's like 
he's lit, but it's flatter lighting and he still has some shadows. If you look at Trey's, there's a lot of contrast. There's depth. You can see definition in his eyes and his face, his background. There's a lot of depth and grit to it. Trey's lighting right now is wolves. Well, hey, that's your job. You should have the best yeah, yeah. lighting. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a probably 30-year-old chandelier lighting. But yeah, I exactly. would say Corey's set design with the natural vines flat going through, like that's just so Jungle Book. I mean, not Jungle yeah. Book. Um, Jumanji. Grandma's house. Yeah, Grandma's yeah. house is what. Yeah. There's actually a new plant that Haley just bought. That's actually lovely. You know, those are yeah. those are great. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's good access. We need like to get plants, man. Off. Our humidity is uh, being crazy. Facebook, yeah, marketplace. Your okay. Corey, you've got yeah. from the limited amount that I've seen from your house, you have like a very like um, like kind of like um, classic like Americana, like yeah. with like warm kind of like couple Trey's house as. I've actually seen it has like kind of like an art deco kind of feel. Yeah, well, that's probably, yeah, no. yeah, exactly. Yeah. This literally um, is my grandparents' house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, there's history. Home. Yeah. There's history. You can almost feel it. My, my house is a, is a mystery, I suppose, but <laughs> obviously I don't, I don't hang anything on the wall. So, yeah. you know, yet, because I just can't figure you, out what to do with my own. You haven't been there long enough yet. Yeah. So like, that's true but it'll happen it'll happen yeah, exactly <laughs> but yeah to go on to what you were saying like yeah. um it was just camera positioning and all that stuff i mean it's like to break down where mine's set up my camera's shooting fronting from the dark side and my lights over here so it's gonna yeah. give it a 3d look and it's just like watching that film they just they had the camera in the right spot everywhere, even in the parking, uh, the parking garage. The parking garage was probably the most lit scene mm, mm -hmm. in the whole film, but it, it didn't look. That's a tough like environment that. to yeah, light yeah. and shoot in, especially naturally. Oh, it was all fake light. Yeah, yeah. They, they staged that. Yeah, but you but you almost have to because it's like you're talking about like um, – like, you know, I mean, a parking garage is going to have all fluorescence and there's a lot of reflective surfaces around, not just like the cars, but also the, you know, just like the colors, like the, um, you know, like the, the gray, light, light grays and cement and things like that. You just have a lot of bounce in there. So they faked it well. Maybe they could have gone a little bit darker to make Less, it a little bit yeah, more moodier or something, but maybe to make it a little bit more believable that that guard didn't notice that they were like exactly, acting so yeah, strange. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it fit though. Um, so, Corey, this might shock you a little bit, the pricing and stuff. But I was looking at the camera that they shot it with. So they shot this with two Ari Alexa cameras. So we're no talking way. about cameras. Cameras that are like minimum $80,000. It's insane. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, they look yeah, good. They did. Yeah. they did the job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm sure I'm, they got how much they money got they made. For. Yeah, Trey, would you say like, um, you know, from from like a digital filmmaking standpoint, like for digital camera standpoint, is that like, um, is the Ari Alexa like the gold standard right now, or what's like? Because I know like for a long time it was like the Dragon, and then you had the Alexa and the Black Magic for a little while, and blah blah blah. What do you think? I think Black Magic it is about to shake up the industry with what they just came out with because they came out with a 12k and a 17k camera and both of them are are under thirty thousand dollars and i just told you about an eighty thousand 4k camera <laughs> and uh but it's all about color science and stuff like that and mm -hmm. black magic is the closest to that but yeah. no i would say Ari's in a place of its own because of just uh, the co the it's it's how like that sensor just reads light and all that stuff. But um, it's starting yeah. to get people are catching up to him. Yeah, if that you, answers. Co Corey, to kind of drag you into the conversation. No, Sorry, because I, I know now no, that I was we're really just looking to see how much wolves grossed, but they don't really have much information. They don't have it. Oh, I mean, it's hard off of streaming, but um, with um. What did you think? Of, I mean, like, did you notice like on, I don't, I don't know what kind of TV setup you have, but did you like 
Did you notice any of that? Was that something that stood out to you? Or is that like from more of a fan perspective, does that kind of blend into you? Um, well, to be honest with you, I watched half of it on my phone. And a lot of times <laughs> that doesn't give me very good, like, because the brightness yeah. of my phone sometimes is like, honestly, the first scene, I really couldn't see a lot of because it was a very dark scene. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and I was yeah. watching it on my phone, so <laughs> I probably should watch it all so back. So Scorsese was right. That's yeah. not cinema. Huh? Yeah. yeah, definitely not. So I definitely need to watch it all back on my TV to get that full feel from all the different angles of the cinematic. I would views. say watch the opening scene, yes. the chase scene, the, um, the yeah, nightclub. I saw scene. that scene on my TV. The club. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was the really show. The, yeah, the night, yeah, yeah. the nightclub, and by the way, um, and we'll get to this, but there's these um, wonderful shots of the snow at the end, mm-hmm. and it was, I mean, I thought personally just stunning. Like when they're walking through the snow, at you know, kind of coming into the climax of the film. I just thought that that was beautiful. The way the snow looked. I don't know if that was real snow. I have no clue, but there was this feeling about it, and it looked just so cinematic, and it just had that cold feel. But we'll, we'll get there. I mean, you know, I don't want to jump ahead off from your flow. One of the one of the I guess cinematic scenes that I thought was pretty cool was whenever uh, they were getting ready to go into that warehouse after that one gunfight. Um, mm-hmm. And then the one guy just kind of comes out of the dark door. You don't see it. Oh, yeah. The doorway is just like really dark. And then he just like falls out and then just sprays the gun as he's falling. I thought that was a really cool shot. Mm-hmm. That looked great. That looked that like down the down the alleyway. You, you know what that reminded me? Uh, you know, I might as well just say it because we're already there. But you know what that reminded me of a lot? Um, and, and that feeling of like the long night. Did you guys ever play Max Payne? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, that. that's what it reminds. And Corey, you need to play Max Payne. <laughs> Any of the Max Paynes, I don't care. But um, I don't care. Yeah, but well, especially like the first one has like that feeling where it's like again the long night. Um, it's like gritty. It's film noir. It's like hard boiled kind of kind of feel. This this movie's not really gritty and hard boiled, but there's like this like the snowfall accumulating over the city kind of feel, and then um. You know, like there was just like these like dimly lit grungy alleyways. And I love that look and feel for like any film noir, like hard boiled cop or like revenge story or like, again, that 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 concept of the long night. I, I, I've i always loved like I just think that that's so great. And I yeah, Max missing a little bit here, but mm-hmm. yeah, Max Payne definitely had that feel. I uh, That was a great game to play. And it does. Yeah. It, it it reminds me of this film for sure. Yeah. 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 So I'm looking at anyway. the chase scene. Yeah. I'm derailing. I'm sorry. It reminded me that he was he ran from them in pretty much his uh, whitey tidies uh, until uh, George oh, Clooney man. accidentally hits him with a car. Yeah. That what was, was you all's mindset at that moment? Slow motion. White kid in his whitey tighties now doing a cartwheel like literally twelve feet in the air. And I don't I don't know why they made it seem like this dude was like a superhero there for that a couple of it was, it was the drugs. It was like, the drugs. I, oh, right, is yeah, that what yeah. they were trying to highlight? The drugs gave him like superpowers basically, because like that him landing on his feet like that never would happen. <laughs> But, no, he was he was, was lucky, was and, funny. and and I think I think that was like Brad Pitt's reaction. Pretty much was just like him, where yeah. you know he's, <laughs> he's like, oh. and then, yeah. But I really, and Corey, you didn't see it, but it's like, and so maybe you're the better person to ask about it. But like that was featured prominently in the trailer, and I kind of wish they hadn't given that away. I wish they had shown like maybe he gets hit by the car. Yeah. You didn't? No, uh, oh I, God, yeah. I didn't see that. I saw that like three times and it's like, it gave it away. And it's a, I, I don't know if it was like, cause it's not really integral to the character or to the story. I guess in a way it kind of reveals like Brad Pitt's character and Clooney still have like a heart and like a sense of humanity to them. Uh, like a sense of like uh, wonder, I guess. But it's like, by that same token, I kind of th- thought it was like the stunt team in the, 
filmmakers kind of being like, this is a cool shot. And it's a great shot, but it's like, I don't know, you know, I don't know. What, I don't know. What do you think? No, yeah, no, it was, it was a good shot. And I, I was just looking at it to remind myself, but um, mm-hmm. I love how they had their camera doing a 360 around Brad Pitt yeah. and his facial expressions. That was pretty cool. That was yeah. A cool shot. I, I, I almost thought for a second, for a brief moment, did you all ever see the movie Meet Joe Black? I know no. I have. I just can't okay. Remember. So in in that movie, uh, Brad Pitt uh, is a guy who dies, and then he becomes like a some kind of angel or something like that, and he comes back and haunts a woman, and they fall in love. You know, whatever. I don't know some gobbledygook. But do yourself a favor and just watch the part in the movie where he dies. And I was almost wondering if this was like a slight nod to it. Because it's one of the most hilarious death scenes you'll ever see in your life. Because literally, he's crossing the street and he like waves at someone. And a car comes and just smashes him. And he just goes flying in the air and bounces off of two cars. And there's an extra in the foreground who reacts. But I guess they were doing it like a composite shot or something like that because he reacts almost like late. And it's hilarious. And I almost thought for a minute, I was like, is that a nod to meet Joe Black? Because he does the cartwheel over as opposed to just getting hit by the car and smashed. Yeah. yeah. That'd be, yeah. Because I think someone told me this was produced by Brad Pitt's uh, production. It is. Plan B. Yeah. Plan B. Yeah. So it could have been. And uh, we've already referenced multiple other other films from both of these actors. Yeah. So I mean, they might have done that on purpose to throw a little bit of this and that in there, just because they want to highlight some stuff they've done before. Because what are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing right now? We're talking about yeah, it, right? Exactly. So it's like, yeah, are we all gonna go back and watch these other films that we haven't seen? Yeah. Like you know. I don't know. I mean, I I think what I said is such a deep cut too. I don't even know, you know, I have no idea if I just remember that so vividly, but like I said, do yourself a favor and at least just watch that one part of Meet Joe Black because I laughed so hard when I saw that Um, just because the way he bounces and the way the uh, extra reacts. It's, it's great. It's fantastic. The, uh, as we're moving in through the story, the, uh, the hotel scene. So, I was I was laughing before it even started because it's like these two older white guys walking in with this young white guy. Everybody asks this yeah. black woman, "Can we get a hotel room for us three? Yeah. <laughs> and he's I, not I he's was, not a prostitute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought she was gonna say something. It should have been a yeah. comedian at that window, and they should have mm-hmm. definitely hit that. But they they did all right. With it. Yeah, I, would, I think. I the they had him they were like honeymoon suites or something like that, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I think it was a love hotel. I think oh, they went to like a seedy hotel. like love hotel. And that makes sense because it's like obviously like a love hotel. It's not going to be like monitored as much. Like, yeah, you know, what, what happens in the love hotel. The one of the rooms yeah. was like per hour, but then the honeymoon suites or whatever for for the night. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. And I he was, was a funny scene for yeah. dialogue too. I that was funny. That. His um, he was um, and at that point he was dressed in, because um, they both had outfits for the. Yeah. I think she was like an attorney general or district attorney or yeah, whatever she was, the politician. They both had outfits for, and she picked two pieces of either of their outfits, <laughs> and then the kid got the leftovers, which was like a pair of like slacks and like like a blouse, yeah. and so yeah, he like looked a, like silk blouse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he looked like a prostitute. Yeah. He did. He did look like a prostitute. <laughs> but not in. Um, um, so we move through that, and uh, then we start to really get toward action. I feel like, like it was like twenty minutes of action, and I thought it was pretty good action. I mean, the car. Mm. So they first of all, they're like, "All right, we don't have to kill this kid. We can just let him go and." finish dropping off the dope, which will catch everybody up. So he also went to this hotel to get liquid courage because he had to go drop a bag of drugs off to someone. And uh, it was actually a setup 
which we figure out. And they're like, oh, we'll just let this play out so we don't have to kill this kid ourselves. Mm -hmm. But then they kind of, both of, I think Brad Pitt got soft first. And uh, so then they're like, ah, we can't let this kid die. So uh, then we start to get into gun gun gunfights. And I thought it was a pretty good shootout. Yeah, what was the the first gunfight? Refresh my memory. For some reason, I'm forgetting what the first one. So they walk into a Croatian wedding or something like that. And, right. Oh, that, uh, that, 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 that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And that's I, when I it think even before you get the one on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before. Yeah, I did skip that a little bit. So, yeah, we had the wedding, which kind of set the tone for, all right, shit's about to get tense. Yeah, and that like was... The, uh, the father of the bride or whatever at this wedding was yeah, like some mob. Croatian mobster or whatnot that they both <laughs> have history with. And they knew that if they were seen, that he would recognize them and there would be some bad stuff would probably go down and yeah sure enough that's what happened they start dancing and whatnot and they get put in this dance circle and you know it was just kind of funny i like when they put like just little dance scenes into movies just for comedic relief i have to like in, so in a way so okay so coming into this there, there's a theme of like we start to find out from the practicality of the world that if they and and they just state this in in the car before they go into this scene or whatever. Oh, did we lose someone? We lost Trey there. Um, so it's like they're sitting in the car and the kids with them and the kids like, Oh yeah, my buddy, he works in that place. And that's where I got to get the pager, that's man. Right. Cause that's where I left the pager, whatever. So they're both sitting there in the front seat of the car and they're like, Oh, Croatians. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what? Like what, what's about like Croatians? And so basically they are like, nah, we can't do this. We can't go in, whatever. And maybe you'll remember this better than me. Um, but at that point, they were basically saying, like, if we're seen together by this guy who's owned us, then he knows we're sharing his secrets, or at least he'll think that. Right. Because they're meant to be isolated. Like, mm-hmm. they're meant to be isolated cells, basically. Um you know, so with that in mind, it's kind of like, okay, so if they're isolated cells, they can't go in there together. They kind of do their banter thing for a minute. And then they both decide, hey, Trey, we can see up your nose, man. Um, <laughs> um, it's, uh, but during that, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, that was good. Uh, but, but during that moment, they both are like, okay, we're going to go in together. And I was like, but why? Like, yeah. why? Why are you going in together? Like, right. why are you both going into this club if you know that both of you being seen together is going to get you all killed, mm-hmm. right? Did, did did you catch any of that? Like, yeah. why? Yeah, that made sense. Ended up going in because I think they weren't they just saying at first they were just going to let the kid go in by himself, but then yeah, I don't know what drew them to both go in. Yeah, I might have like, confused this with talking ahead. I think at that point. They didn't think he was really going to get the pager. Something yeah, with they it. Still didn't, they still didn't trust him. They still didn't trust him. And that, that's true. But it would kind of like follow where you would say one of us will go in and watch him. Right. Right. And I know at that point, maybe you could argue, well, we don't trust each other. But it's like, well, but it kind of led to that little there, – there's a farce – you know, that, like there's a farcical nature to this uh, movie. And, you know, if you're not familiar with the farce, it's like Arsenic and Old Lace or, um, you know, some Shakespeare play, you know, it, whatever. It's like basically like think of like people running in and out of a room and hiding each other and like uh, slapstick. Lots of fast talking, like wall to wall fast talking. There's a farcical nature to it where it's like they're doing their physical comedy as both Clooney and Pitt are talented at. And it's like they go in, they decide to go in with the Croatians, even though they know that's a danger. And then they're both hiding, but they're both hiding like your three-year-old would hide. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like where they're both like, yeah, like yeah. the most obvious, like heads sticking out, you know, yeah. like both leaning out and they're staring at this kid. And I'm like, guys. <laughs> Isn't this part of your job? Like, anyway, I mean, it's like it yeah. led to an amazing scene, like we, what you were talking about, Corey, with like the um, 
the the dance scene where they get wrapped up into the dance scene and they're like um kind of basically being passed to each other and even then like the croatian dude who's like looking at them both at the same time and it's like everybody's dressed in white and they're both wearing black yeah which was yeah. wonderful, like visually, yeah. but by that same token, I was like, that dude would have spotted them within three seconds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They did a so good I don't know. Job, I guess covering it too, acting like they didn't know that each other were there at this wedding. Whenever they, they pulled the guns, caught, they pulled the guns on each other, and yeah, so that was a good cover yeah. for what you know. And I think it's. What are you doing? I think it's good also that um she's losing it. But oh. uh I think it I think when they were it just shows how they can cover things on the fly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they knew that they would get in trouble, but they didn't know how they were gonna these guys don't even know each other. But yeah. because they know each other's background a little bit and they know what each other do, they were able to just work in the moment and figure out a solution together. Without yeah, they both they both came to the same conclusion, right? right? And it's like it wasn't. It was almost like they were doing it in concert, like they were working with each other. But they right. both came to the same conclusion of like, if I pretend like I'm going to kill you, then the only thing that I didn't get about it was, and you know, I overthink stuff. You know this, mm-hmm. but it, it's just like from a character standpoint, from a, why would you assume that like running into just some guy that you don't know why like pulling a gun on, on each other. Like yeah. if, if you and I were at like Trey's <laughs> wedding or anniversary, right. And yeah, yeah. you and I were plotting against him and he didn't know that cause he's not here. So, shh. um, you know, and we were plotting against him and we wanted him to think that you and I didn't know each other. Mm-hmm. Like us like immediately like reacting to each other would right. almost be more of like a red flag. Exactly, like if I yeah. bumped into you while dancing, I was like, who's, who is yeah. this man? I can't <laughs> believe it. Like I've noticed he's even different uh, than me. I noticed he's notable. And it's like, why would you know that he is right. that? And it's like, it almost felt like a meta perspective of like, yep. okay, he knows that we would know that the other guy, but it's like, in reality, you should just have no idea who that guy is. Exactly. So you would just dance with him. You would yep. completely ignore him. And if he was like, hey, who are you guys? You'd be like, "I, who is this guy in the yellow sweater? I have no – should I know this guy? Like why? Like what, what's the problem? You know, I'd get mad at him and be like, why are you putting me in this position? As opposed right. to like the second I saw you, I'd start fighting you. No, I get that. Yeah. So, that I don't know if y'all cool. can hear me, but – Okay, I'm I'm having some internet issues, so, but yeah, uh, so I'm just gonna be audio. But no, okay. yeah, that that uh the whole wedding Your thing, voice. that was that was probably one of the scenes that was like, okay, that could have been avoided. Is that yeah. pretty much what you're talking about? Like, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, that's what we came to yeah. the conclusion of. Yes, I think yeah, I bludgeoned that's... Corey into uh, agreeing with me. I think is what happened. <laughs> No, no, I heard you. It was a good take. It, yeah. yeah, it could have been avoided. It was like, I think it was just trying to build um, a little bit of history, I guess, mm-hmm. is why they wanted to, a shared history. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah. this is right where the story wanted to be like, all right, they actually have paths that cross, and we're going to start trying to help you connect the dots on it a little bit. Yeah. Um, type of thing. But uh, so then after that is really where we got into like the shootout I was mentioning, because what, then the henchmen decided hold on i don't trust these two guys they're actually friends or something and what was like, it with the with them. the guns because when they put he takes their guns and he puts it down yeah. on the table and then the guy that his like head henchman, he looked at him yeah but what, i don't know what, what exactly the but i'm gonna i'm gonna said, assume that they were the same like type of gun well he said something about oh you're talking about something triggered him to a red flag to yeah be like, yeah because he says it's... he says buddies he looks at the two guns yeah, buddies, zoom in on said. the two guns and he says yeah. buddies yeah. yeah okay and then that's what and so i i didn't quite get that because i was like all right even I if they had the either. same gun i'd be like that's like yeah. if two people had a kalashnikov you'd be like just yeah. cheap and easy to find like if two people had a glock you know you'd be like okay cheap and easy to find i guess yeah. i guess the hook was is that they are the same even if they pretend not to be and so they yeah. had the same gun. It was the same 
spec. It had the same mods on it and everything else like that. And yeah, something. because of that, he just assumed, I don't know. I, I feel like some of it, you know, we, I talk at least about a lot about like themes, like thematics and, and, and um, things like that. But I, it was almost like that was like for the sake of the theme. And some of it was like for the sake of like the, the dance number or whatever was like for the sake of the filmmaking, like right. the visual spectacle. Um, it's fine. It's all, it's yeah. all fine. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it a little for, it, yeah. it was short enough, short lived enough, yeah. I guess to say at least. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but the, during the shoot shootout or whatever, mm -hmm. one thing they're in the car because the kid went in to, um, ultimately meet his fate i think that's where we're at i'm trying to remember but yeah. um and george clooney had like his trunk set up with you know storage guns or whatever you're, you're jumping a little bit ahead because this, this was the part yeah, part yeah yeah this was the part where um they ran out of the club and george clooney finds the kid there sure. okay yeah yeah that's yeah right. and that's the kid right. was like hey i told you i'd come through or whatever um and then after that, they they go to um they go to the breakfast place. Yeah, they go to have like breakfast or something. That's yeah, where the they diner. they both are trying to not not breakfast. Sorry, it was like yeah, they diner, go to like the yeah. late night diner, place. midnight midnight diner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, probably home. And yeah, that's where they kind of come to terms. I'm like, all right, what are we gonna do with this with this kid? Yeah, I don't know if you heard that, Trey. Did you hear what I said? Tolly ho, Tolly ho. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Tolly ho. <laughs> I Man, that's, that's some cheese it's fries Lexington sound spot. sound great. I think tally. I think tally ho might be a little bit of a maybe a little chain. I feel like I've seen a tally ho before, but maybe, no, it's, maybe it's a different. Yeah, it yeah, could be. I don't know, but I know the one in Lexington was our go-to late-night spot after the bars. Man, I couldn't even. Yeah, I barely remember most of those nights. Yeah. I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we're yeah, we're we're almost there though. So they did yeah. that. They had that little talk, and they got to pretty much. He kind of okay. So one, we have to go back to the dialogue of Austin's character because mm. he he never got to the point of what he was trying to say, and they yeah. really ran all that, and it was pretty it was pretty hilarious. Um, and that's kind of what he did throughout the whole thing, just kind of filming in on how much his life sucked. At his point, he wants to be, he just wanted to be a cool kid and how much he admired them too. Oh, and yeah. so they kind of, they kind of took like a, a like into that and that really showed at the diner. Um, so they figured he would just, you know, off himself with passing off the drugs. But then that's the next thing they do is where they go to the drop and they send him in. And then literally after they send him in, like 10 black SUVs roll up and it's, all out shootout time. Um, the shootout, one thing I noticed is like Brad Pitt, once he got a gun, I mean, kind of both of them, they like were accurate as hell mm -hmm. with shooting. Yeah, so I thought that, that, was... that scene that you're getting ready to talk about with the, where they're at the back of the car and they pull the guns yeah. out and Brad Pitt's just waiting for a gun, I guess. And yeah, yeah. Clooney throws the first one and then it he doesn't catch it. He just goes skidding across the floor, yeah, and yeah. then they, the other people, are shooting at it, and they just shoot the gun away. And yeah. Then he looks and hands him another one. But like you said, the accuracy. So Brad Pitt gets that gun, and he looks at this like sign, and he, he like, tests. It, yeah. He tests the test how it shoots, and he shot one bullet, and then shot the second bullet, and it was dead on where he wanted it to be. But it was yeah. just funny, you know, them kind of showing that. Off, yeah. like hey, I like that. That was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they they wreck. I mean, they just wreck those dudes yeah. at that point. Like the, the like the guys that they're up against, and um, that kind of leads us to that little little alley shot that we were talking about, where they're both kind of like moving together with their guns, mm -hmm. and there's a snow falling, and then like Corey, you kind of talked about that guy walking out of the dark door, yeah. and he kind of that... falls and sprays his gun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, out of the club. Because they, um, they were assuming they were going into something else, but then they saw that and they're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And then they go yeah. and find a yeah. big mess. And they, find, they find the kid in there, 
and it's like a bloodbath. It's like a drug deal gone bad, essentially, you know, that type of thing. And it's a it's a full on bloodbath. And the dead bodies everywhere. Dead bodies everywhere. They find Fight the kid hiding with blood all over it. <laughs> yeah, just like everywhere. And they find uh, there's yeah, it's just a limo. It was obviously like in like a limo uh, you know, uh, depot or depot what, or what would you call yeah. it? Yeah. And um they find the kid in the trunk. Yeah, and the kid pops, pops out. And they tell the kid, you know, he's like going around, he's grabbing whatever from them. And they're kind of coming to the pinnacle decision here. And the, the pinnacle decision they had talked about, I guess, was the battle for their souls, for their lives, right? It's, it's, uh, all right, no, no survive, no witnesses, no survivors. The last loose end is this kid. Yeah. So we got to kill him. And so Clooney. Well, this kid is leaned down, looking down. Clooney walks up close with his with his gun, and Brad Pitt moves away, off behind him, and starts aiming his gun. Did you guys buy it? What did you guys think? Well, well, at that point, we were supposed to think that they were going to do it. What they call it, like a, um, he like said, there's a reason why they have firing a a firing yeah. squad. Mm-hmm. It's so no one ever feels the emotions of being the actual person that had their bullet hit him place that mm-hmm. you know I feel like we'll do it like that so you know brad pitt was in position to that they would just fire together i guess mm-hmm. but then and through the whole time you kind of have that emotional ride and I, i'll let Corey get in on this but it no, you yeah. have that emotional ride of like brad pitt was already soft on it so there's no way he really wanted to but then it like played with your heartstrings because then you think he actually is like i'll do it you know whatever i don't know Corey, how did you how do you feel about that watching it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you all are um, hitting the nail on the head with it, but you, it just shows like Clooney when you can see in his face that he's like, at first he's like, okay, I'm doing my job. And then you kind of see it like, you just kind of see a change because he starts to lower his gun back down. And then the sh- the shot goes off and that's when he turns mm-hmm. and he looks like, hey, you actually did it? When Brad Pitt yeah, yeah. pulls the trigger, and then he shot the drugs and was saying something about it to. I don't really know what he meant by this and why there was a tracker in that drug, in those drugs that he shot. But I don't know if you all know. Can clear that, that was the last. That was the last clue, basically, of like why that was the last, how they knew where they everyone. Yeah, they, they knew were. that they were kind of like running into the situation over and over again because. Basically, they were being tracked the entire time, and earlier on, they were looking for a tracker and the drugs, and so that's how the Croatians knew and whatever else they showed up because they're like, oh, they showed up here, and um, the uh, you know he shoots the drugs and he's like, oh, to make it look more realistic, like the drugs that got shot in the thing, mm-hmm. yeah, and then they see the tracker and they're like, oh, tracker and the drugs, like duh, you know. Um, <laughs> but I thought yeah. that they were trying to set it up more so not that like like that Pitt was going to double cross them both like he was going to shoot Clooney yeah. in the back Yeah, and I wasn't yeah. sure if that was if Clooney shot the kid he was going to shoot Clooney because then that meant that Clooney was more bloodthirsty I, I you know like mm-hmm. soulless I don't know how to describe it but it's like I wasn't quite sure on what his intentions were what I do know is that like if I'm Clooney and I have to go shoot a kid and I just came to a very new alliance with a guy that I wasn't sure about. And then that guy backed off my side and behind me with a gun. I'd be like, yeah. wait a minute, hold on. Like, whoa, whoa, think, whoa, whoa. what do you, yeah, <laughs> you it, it, that was sense. a, that was an emotional <laughs> yeah. scene because they really wanted you to be like, all right, what you had, I mean, all three of us watching it could have three different mm-hmm. emotions oh. that were accurate to have during that scene. Yeah. That's, that's which, which was well done they, from an emotional standpoint. Well done, yeah. yeah. Because mm-hmm. you did. You were like, all right, is he going to double cross them? And as we're, we're finishing up here, like, so that he doesn't, and they take the kid off to the sunset pretty much. Mm-hmm. But they, before they get to his house to return him home, the, uh, I think everybody has seen this trailer, but they're on the train, and uh, George Clooney, is acting like he got shot and he pulls out the oh fuck you finger. Yeah. 
Uh, I thought that yeah. was pretty funny. That was a good little comedy to have in there. Yeah, that um, was good. But that I, was good. That was them having their cake am, and eating it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm which is still, fine. I'm still confused about the taking him home, talking to his dad, and leaving. I'm still, and I don't know that, if I was just distracted during that. I no, that was strange. I had the same feeling because it's like they show okay. up. They drop the kid off and the dad like sticks his head out the door and looks at both of them. And he's just like, they're like, Hey, and then they like leave. And I'm like, uh, why would the dad know that you guys exist? Like, yeah. And I think they like broke it down to him that like, Hey, this happened or whatever. And we'll come like kill you all. If if he ever talks about it and does this and that. And like pretty much told him to be a better dad kind of thing, I think. But, but I still just don't get the whole like the set decoration there, the conversations mm-hmm. they had. Like it all was just. Yeah, I don't know. I'm about to watch it again because the dad like like a well known actor too. Like he was, yeah. Uh, second scene. Yeah. It was like Jeffrey yeah. Tambor. Oh, who the hell was it? It was like uh, I can't think of his name, but yeah, I'm looking at him right stuff, now. But... Yeah, no, he's yeah. a good actor for sure. Yeah, uh, he's, he's been a lot. Maybe there was a whole other scene. <laughs> Yeah, because they have the they have like coffee with them, right? Like right after that, yeah, or something. Yeah, they did. So they, they, those it. two go to uh, the diner, and mm-hmm. uh, I mean, if one of you all want to take it over, because can't see me talking and stuff. <laughs> but if y'all want to break down the the ending, yeah. So I, I just this is the part where I literally just watched this yeah. last twenty minutes. Yeah, but, hit us. So they're sitting talking in the diner, and. I think they're both coming to a realization they're they now can breathe. Like you said, one long night, Jake, like that's what this has felt like. So, but now they've missions accomplished. They've got everything completed and now they're, they're breaking down what they just went through. All the, all the things are coming to a head and they're like, you know, why did this happen? And why did that happen? I don't know. There's specific, specific details that they actually trigger on but they're mm-hmm. like hey i think somebody's setting us up because oh that's mm-hmm. it they they're like when you got that phone call from your guy who's your guy and he's like yeah because yeah, exactly. you got a phone call from your guy and it's like he had a quote who's your said, guy? i can't they, remember the quote didn't. but it was funny because yeah. they weren't yeah. they they weren't gonna tell who their guy was but because certain things happened they they know that they have the same guy, yep, and exactly. then they're like, all this stuff could have been avoided. Why did they send both of us in when they if we have the same guy, they only needed to send one of us in for this, but they send us both in, and then they're like, wait, maybe we're about to get cleaned. Maybe they were wanting to clean us because yeah, exactly. they thought they said he's they specifically said they thought that we would have went in to deliver the package. But the kid was still alive. They didn't know mm-hmm. the kid would still be alive. And then yep. that's what saved us. So basically the kid was their savior for the whole thing. And yeah. Uh, yeah. They found out they and, and at the end, like they it looks like like a shootout's basically about to happen and they yeah. almost have like a little bit of like Butch Cassidy and Sundance kid at the end where it's like they both come up with their guns and they fire and yeah. it's like cuts the, to the end well, the funny thing of the movie. Is too, like they haven't even He's like, I don't even know your name. And he's like, Yeah, I'll tell you if we get it through this. Basically, he's like, Yeah. So that. So that, I mean, and that's what my take was on. Well, I'll yeah, what you finish, Jake, and then I'll tell you the take about what I think uh, for the sequel and stuff like that. If they're gonna. Happen. Okay, okay. I was gonna ask you, uh, actually, and maybe this will play into it a little bit because, do you think, uh, number one, um. At the end of this movie, tech, I mean, we, we see them as good guys, right? Like, we're rooting for them. Do you think that prior to that, prior to their, um, you know, them saving the kid or whatever, were they good guys? From the beginning of the movie, were they good guys? I don't think so. I mean, for their, the, can they really be good guys? For their they, line of work? Yeah, their line of work, I don't think they're allowed to be good. Because. I guess. I don't I mean, know. I mean, I guess it depends on, I don't know. Because there's going to be situations where what they do is good, mm-hmm. but there's also going to be situations where what they do is for the money, and they don't care what it is. So, 
So I'll, I have a I have a take on it a little yeah. bit. With to answer that, and it's because yeah. one of my favorite TV shows uh, was Ray Donovan, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. these guys do exactly what Ray Donovan that whole series was about. But Ray Donovan was a city asshole. <laughs> he was a bad dude was, for a lot. He was of a it. bad dude. Yeah. And no matter who you were in his yeah. life, brother, father, daughter, whatever, he was a crappy person. Yeah, he and was so, bad. Uh, so I don't know. I look at these guys and I see, I see angels compared to Ray Donovan, and yeah. they do the same line of work. So I don't know. Ray Donovan was hurting people that sometimes didn't deserve to be hurt. He was threatening people yeah. who sometimes didn't deserve to be threatened. He was bribing people. He was becoming like soulless. He yeah, cheated on his bad. wife. He was a bad dad. He anything had, you could do bad as a person, he did it. He was doing it all over the place, and it's like yeah. relative to that, and it's like you you start to find out in the TV series Ray Donovan that. You know, his background kind of motivates where he ended ended up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he overcame it through his bad behavior in, in multiple ways, and he had to kind of redeem himself. But George Clooney and Brad Pitt, eloquent, nice, yeah. well-dressed, handsome, uh, kind, um, you know, like thoughtful, like these dudes who are like educated dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Who are like they, you know, they they drive, you know, they they drive well, they shoot well, they mm-hmm. they're both quick on their feet, they you know they they, they care for the woman, they pick out clothes for. Her. Are they bad so, dudes, or is that just their I'm gonna job? Say no. I don't know. I'm going to say yeah. no because Ray Donovan, that was his lifestyle, that was yeah. his life, right? If we think about a another fictional character, and the same thing, that was his lifestyle. These yeah. two kind of made it really prevalent that this was a paycheck. Because yeah. clearly was like, I want to get this done and get home. They did a <laughs> and, bad. They did a bad thing, but it's yeah, not yeah. like you know. But they could. Yeah. And then Brad Pitt was like, I'm not taking this to my home. You know, yeah. like really keep working. Oh yeah, like, yeah, going for it. And and oh yeah, sorry, Corey, go ahead. My, my my take on it though is like we saw a change in both of them in this film, <laughs> right? So now they look like they're good because they let him live and because of the decisions they made in this film, but. In their past, I feel like they're not good because they 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 changed who they were to be good. You see what I'm saying? They needed to do something bad, and and, and like the and and even like the 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 politician lady was she bad? Like she was just like I don't even think she was married. Like she was just like oh I like I met this kid and he made me feel attractive and I just got home a little bit late for dinner with my kid. Mm-hmm. I, and so it's like okay. I guess maybe she did a bad thing, but it's like, she didn't kill that kid. She didn't pump him full of drugs. She didn't, yeah, she didn't seduce him. She was just she like, just fell down. I, I'm, I'm a nice lady who I, I met this kid. I felt attractive. I don't know. And, 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 you know, so it's like, she just kind of seems like she's not like really corrupt necessarily. They kind of hint maybe that technically that's corrupt, but she's just like, listen, I just can't have this bad press. I understand yeah, that. Like, yeah. it, like just as like a high prominent person, if you were like, if you just went to a hotel and you started to hook up with someone, you're single, you know, single parent, even who cares? You start to hook up with someone and they die and you're like, oh my God, like this person was high and they died. I don't know what to do. I didn't yeah. do it. Like I wasn't doing drugs. Yeah. Like, but you know, like, there was politics, like that's going to, they can find a way to turn it and make it look bad on you anyway. Oh, uh, so I don't like, know, dude. In, in today's to... politics, they would probably be like, "Hey, as long as long as uh, as long as she makes me feel like a big man, then it's okay." Uh, so, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you all yeah. this before we go into what does the ending mean, um, right. and also the sequel because I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to put yeah, that out there. So the setup, like mm-hmm. we we've now gotten to the point that we understand and we know this was a setup right yeah where did the setup initiate like where you know where did this person say all right here's our opportunity to set these two up because the kid is the x factor and he doesn't that they didn't plant the drugs like on the politician this kid brought it in and he was an yeah. uncontrollable so did this did this kid spark the opportunity to set them I up think, is that I think so Okay. Because because that's they don't they don't get brought in till that event happens, right? So their guy right. their guy decides that he wants to get both of them on this or you know, they they already knew something about the drugs being there. I don't uh-huh. know. I don't know. 
it's, it didn't it's, seem like they knew about it. I don't. But, I don't understand that a hundred percent. To be honest with you, right. I don't know why they did. I mean, other than they both just knew too much and they're old now. Maybe it was just time to like they yeah, both know definitely. too much. But it didn't see. I, I think that the kid basically initially saved them because I think initially based right, on what but, getting but there, I don't know. How did they? How did them actually get set up? Start though, because I feel like the kid was too uncontrollable. Like him, one yeah. being there, him actually having yeah. the drugs from the right people. So is there yeah. is there a a mishap in the writing there, or it, it, w- it would make sense so, that as a consequence of them letting the kid live, the guy decided that they both needed to be cleaned. Okay, that would make that sense kid, to me. Okay, like, but but sense. I don't think that's what happened because the, they the figured out that dead. the same guy sent them. Yeah, cause yeah, they both were sent early on. Yeah. yeah, and like the that lady, as far as she knows, that kid's dead. She never, she was gone and left. Yeah, sure, but before they found out he was still alive. Yeah. So that's I don't know. That's getting confusing. It's a big old. It's a big old hole, and I feel like again, hey, it was something that they're gonna find out. They're gonna fill that hole in the sequel. Yeah, okay, yeah, Corey. Exactly. Maybe this is yeah. a good setup. What, what do you think? What, what do you yeah, think? What do you think the end of me? My yeah. thing is like, I, it's more. I more have a question on. How do you all feel about making? I know, I know the path you're going down, Trey, with wanting to do yeah. like these little series, little mini series stuff. So and have everything pieced together. But when making a big film, it's almost like sometimes they leave an option open, like, "Hey, let's let's not do this because if we get enough, you know, money from this film and there's enough interest." then we can leave it open for a sequel. Or if we do this, 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 and this, we're not going to be able to fill in a sequel because we've killed off all these people and the main character's dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, so I don't, I don't know. Big bad. This is really particular you, to this film, but it's just like a general form question, I guess. I could see, I could see, I could, all right, so Wolves won't go this way because I don't think either one of these actors do series. I think they are straight up oh, uh, no, feature, feature film. Yeah, they're feature film actors. Uh, so meaning they're going to do films that are done in 130 minutes or whatever, um, or 90 minutes. But anyway, mm-hmm. so I would say it almost wouldn't surprise me if we start seeing things turn into, all right, we're going to put this film out here. People are now bought into these characters. Now let's let's do a sequel and let's give them the backstory. Let's give them more and prequel. see how far we could take it. Well, yeah, a prequel like, almost or a sequel with place. it. My question is, why didn't you just yeah, do that in I, the first place? Yeah. If you were wanting to, do because that, no one, I, no one wants the it. unless you see unless you see George Clooney and Brad Pitt come in and, and make your movie. Now, I, I you got I, yeah. I will say people this. Came to watch, all right, this is why. People came to watch Brad Pitt and George yeah. Clooney. Now, people want to know who these two characters are. Right, they've built, the, they've built the story. Or they've hooked, I think they've that hooked that's, you in, and now they need it. Yeah, yeah. I, think that that's, I think that that's almost less likely now that they when they moved from theatrical to they saw like the pre-numbers. They were like, all right, no one's going to go see this in the theaters. We're, we're going to push it over to Apple. Maybe you could see something else pop up on Apple. I don't get the sense that Apple has um, the same itis that Netflix and Amazon do, um, where they're like, we got to like make a whole universe like uh, Marvel, because that was a popular thing 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And if and I'm not in the position to do this at all. But if you are a screenwriter, and you are making like a real movie, unless like literally someone is putting a gun to your head with money in Hollywood, don't write a movie to have a sequel unless you are literally already writing a trilogy. Do not do it. The reason people want a sequel is because you had a movie that was beginning to end great and someone goes, I want more of that shit. There are more movies in Hollywood that litter the landscape in, in like the, the scrap heap that tried to have a sequel. Big budget, really overproduced, like whatever. That needed that. Now... Is this movie small enough budget? I guess maybe. I don't know if we grab budget off of it or whatever, but you know, I don't think that you're going to find Brad Pitt and George Clooney coming back for any of this ever again. I think maybe they would produce it if they found like the right person to kind of come in or whatever, but 
I don't think that we see this go any further because I don't think that there's going to be a demand for it. And I think that there's not enough here to say, I need more of that. My take. I think, I think for Apple TV, there, that's the only demand. Like, like you said, like no one's going to theaters. They're not Netflix, this and that. I think for people who are Apple religious and Apple TV and enjoy Apple TV, I think that's where a sequel could, would, would make sense. But, yeah. but, but also to my thing is, is that this was not, yeah, this wasn't something I'd be like, man, I'm going to, this wasn't a theater movie. This was a, let me sit on the couch and like eat dinner enjoy watch it on my phone while i'm doing something type of visually type of it was visually yeah. but yeah visually, not from yeah. a story or like what you took away from it like yeah, yeah. it's not like you know and it doesn't have to be but it's like you know john wick there's a level of spectacle there that you, you know i mean now what are they on number four and they're going to number five on john wick and it's like there's like a similarity here where you have like an old guy who I don't think a lot we'll of action. see another John Wick, and I, we'll we'll end this soon. So mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah, and it's like, fine. But, they got four, but <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll see another. I think they're going to do spinoffs, and then I think we're going to see a John Wick five come after the spinoffs to just tell us if he died yeah. or not. Well, they have an anime or cartoon yeah. version of it. They have a spinoff. They have they they had a spinoff with Hotel Artemis, I think. Yeah, and that, and that guy that guy dying, I think, kind of threw it off. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Um, but um, so yeah. So what do you all? What do you all? You recommend Wolf? Yeah, I think you should. Yeah. See it. I think I think you should watch it. I mean, like what what you just said. Like it's it's like listen. You know why you showed up? Mm -hmm. George Clooney and Brad Pitt and their uh, chemistry. We their chemistry is here. Yeah, yeah. Their, their chemistry, chemistry is here. Uh, they they're both movie stars. And on top of that, I will say this is one of the rare movies where the the writing and the characters from the, the plot perspective were threadbare, but the both actors actually brought more weight and context to it uh, in not every single scene, but in the scenes that it mattered, like the part where Clooney is about to pull the trigger and he's just, the camera's just on his head, his big giant head, and he's got like the the tears in his eyes and he's thinking an internal monologue and with an internal monologue in his head you know what he's thinking you get the idea of who this guy is and now we have an echo thank you but uh <laughs> but uh but both of those both of those guys they really brought their their exp this was not just a paycheck for these guys they both wanted to make this movie for some reason, um, personal and professionally, and they brought a lot to it. And it's worth watching. It It is fun. The cinematography is gorgeous. And there's enough here to enjoy. So I'm going to say six and a half. I give it a seven. Right at seven. I, I enjoyed watching it. but I'm the, almost there with you. The, the, part, the part that gets me, like I said, if if you wanted to make it, if you didn't leave it open ended for the sequel, what what could have they have done? I feel like what they could have brought in would have made the movie a lot better. I mean, I think just the closure for the two guys, honestly, I think just just them leaving it. Um, like you know, you're in a diner again. You have like the long night. I personally would have asked for a little bit more of like them to feel a little bit more beaten up, a little bit more tired, their age two gray beards who are sitting at the diner at the end of the day of like, are we doing this? Or are we done? Or are we, are we buddies? And it's like at the end, just like, if you had just left it without like the idea of like a shootout about to happen after that. And they're both just staring each other down, like old school, like think of the end of um, no country for old men, you know, where it's like, you still have this like grit, like this, like old cowboy. Who's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm done. That's not the right tone for this, but, you know, the, the idea of like them sitting there and he's like, hey, wait a minute, you know, before he gets up and starts to walk off into the sunset, he's like, you never told me your name. And he just, if he kept that same line, I'll tell you what, if we make it through this, I'll tell you. And it's like, what is it that they're making it through? It's just like the rest of their lives. I mean, right. like, I don't need a shootout on the horizon. They can always come back next 
movie and Mm -hmm. show back up with another shootout or something like that. If you want to pick it up from there and he walks outside and comes back in, he's like, you know, fine. But I think that you could have left it with the two characters existing together and, um, you know, connecting on what they just experienced and then him leaving it with that, still that mystery of like, you know, again, like, you know, you never told me your name and he's like, okay, well, if we make it through this, you know, again, our lives, like what our lives are, I'll tell you. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Fucking bam. I don't know. I would yeah. enjoy that better. Also, that would elevate it. My, my take, if, if they would have just like made it a singular film mm-hmm. and they could have brought in that, that evilness of those characters and they could have killed that kid. You see what I'm saying? Cause I'd be down. They, they they left them alive because, yeah. you know, they want to put him in the next film. Just they could have killed someone. I, I don't know. Like they, they could have done something. They could have done something bad. He's not going to be in Rush Hour Four. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, like kill someone, do something bad. Like at least like have someone show up. Like because it's like you know the the doctor character that they both were in a relationship with or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't, she talk, seemed we didn't like, talk, talk about that. Like, I forgot she seemed that ambiguous with them, though, where she was like, obviously they with them both, but one of them history. wasn't in a relationship, one of the other. But I'm like, I'm like, could at least her be like, indicate something to me of like, she's like, the last time I saw you, you hit me. I don't know. I don't know. Give me something where I it's like, I know that them. these guys are bad dudes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love how Brad Pitt was messing with George Clooney's character too. Is like, yeah, yeah. We're, we, we hooked up type of thing. She's like, he's messing with you. I thought that. Yeah. It's like, wait, wait, you didn't like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I appreciate that. It was a cute film. Yeah. They kept their family cuteness. I think they were aiming for an audience that they knew we would bring our parents to go see it. So they didn't want to put a lot of grit in there. And I think that they were trying to also aim for a mainstream theater audience and they didn't get it. So the movie perhaps, and again, it's Brad Pitt's production company and it's George Clooney and Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt and George Clooney can do what Brad Pitt and George Clooney want to do. Obviously we're going to watch, we're talking for an hour and a half about this, but at the end of the day, I'm like, there probably was an opportunity for them to make a better film but it definitely wasn't a bad movie. That's for sure. Uh, I give it a, I give it a seven out of 10. Um, uh, I actually, I'm gonna go a little bit higher. I'm gonna say eight out of 10 because I can't really say there's too much. I liked, I liked the visuals of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. The dialogue was good. The story was questionable, but um, I didn't have high expectations, I guess, you know? So I guess Mm -hmm. I, I went in with, I didn't have high expectations. I didn't. Even, I don't even know what I expected out of it. But as far as visually, for me watching it, I I enjoyed every scene, the way it looked. Um, the yeah. dialogue was was. Yes, I agree. The dialogue was like it was definitely a movie where it's like, hey Corey, you want to come over? Jake, come over. Let's have a beer and let's watch this. Like it was a bros movie. So it was you know yeah. a bros. A bro, yeah. It was a bromance movie. Uh, so. I enjoyed it. It was a bromance slash you can watch it with your parents. Exactly. Uh, type movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, okay. So that's that's our take on Wolves. We'll wrap it up. But I do want to ask these guys before we get off. Do we want to do a Halloween theme podcast? Do we want to do we want to watch a horror film and come on here and something really quick? We don't even have to be like in depth on it, but maybe just something fun. And should we do it? We got to figure that out. We got, we got a couple of days. I mean, Halloween's right here, man. Yeah, we don't have to do it exactly on Halloween or anything, but, you know, just relative to the, okay. Um, No, no, Sunday, Sunday after Halloween, maybe we can do something like that. Whatever works out, we can actually get Chris uh, involved. Yeah. um, Why don't we talk about it? We can see if you guys want to do a movie on like Netflix or something. Yeah, we can do a scary movie on Netflix. Maybe we can do favorite slasher. Maybe we could do. What do you guys think? We'll Maybe we can find an indie. There's probably like a great indie out there that we could find that's like a good horror movie or something like that. Very that would be kind of sick, right? Very true. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, we'll figure I'm it out. On the and, horror films. Yeah. I like watching them sometimes, but I don't know a lot of them. So I'm yeah, going to take your guys' recommendations. Yeah. Okay. What, what scares you, Corey? 
not much. Bullshit. Not much. I don't. I don't really get too scared. I want to know what scares him, Trey. What scares him? Because we're picking that movie. That's what I want. He's like, no, snakes. nothing. Stuff. I'm thing. scared of snakes in real life, but snakes all right, we're watching a hell of a uh, Anaconda, Anaconda. Yeah, Anaconda too. Yeah. <laughs> the Jennifer Lopez in <laughs> Lopez in Snakes on a plane too. Snakes uh, on a plane, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, boys. Well, this is a good one. Uh, we'll text. We'll figure out this Halloween episode. Cool. Okay. Well, y'all take care. All right, Peace. gentlemen. Have a great night. Peace.